When it comes to noise canceling over the ear headphones, I have been very loyal to the Sony XM line of headphones. In fact, I still have my XM3s and these are the ones I've been using for years now. And I have tried out so many headphones after this, but I have still not had the itch to just completely get rid of these and upgrade. But Bose came out with their Quiet Comfort Ultra and I decided, you know what, let's give Bose another shot. I like the 700, but there were a few missing features on there, so let's see if the Quiet Comfort Ultra fixes those things. So, right around the side, there is this really what I want to call fake looking design. Like, I, I honestly feel like this is something a ripoff of Bose would put on the side of their box. Sound is power. Like, that seems really really just cheaply made. And, and honestly, this whole box seems a little bit low effort. Um, the design, everything is basic, but on the back, you've got a pull tab, which is made of paper. So here, here, that's cute, here, here. All right, let's go ahead, open this up, see what's inside. This is the smoky white color. There are, there is black and there is a soapstone, or no, sandstone, which is a Boast.com exclusive color. You can't get that anywhere else. That is um, something that you can only order from Boast.com. So there are three color options, but realistically only two if you're not willing to order from Boast.com. So right when we open the box, you can see press play, pause the rest. Nice, okay, and the little Boast logo just peeking out of that bottom corner there, opening it up. We have um, cue the music, start here, quick start um, QR code, which is great. I always like when manufacturers include that because a lot of people really don't know what they're doing and having a quick scanner there instead of a lengthy guide that nobody will look at is much better. Glad that they're doing that. And then on this side, you've got a rundown of what the buttons do and still looks like they're, they're using the button on this instead of gestures. I will open this up and check it out. It's, it is a little bit confusing. So you lift this out and there is just a little pack of silica gel in here and Let's see what this paperwork is. It seems like, okay, just regulatory information, nothing more in this box. So the case does come covered in another layer of paper, which you can peel off from the side here. Oop, there we go. Comes off. It is a very light colored case, which knowing how these get thrown around in my bag and knowing how they they work I, I would have liked a slightly darker color for the outside maybe I get it it kind of lines up right with the color of the headphone so that is nice but if you are somebody who want who you know pretty much tosses or their headphones around their bags or here uses it here there while traveling you might want to avoid the lighter color one because this is for sure not going to stand up to the test of time the zip feels really nice you've got this uh, leather strap here to pull on uh, there we go let's go ahead and see what is inside and right off the bat i want to just say thank you bose why thank you is because this design of having the headphones folded up so that the case itself is smaller is something that Sony and Bose both did away with on the 700 and XM5, which was supremely annoying. One of the main reasons why I did not upgrade to the XM5 is because of the way that case design was. It's way too big to fit into a bag. And the thing is, you know, yes, these are big too, but these just end up taking less space somehow. And it works a lot easier compared to having the entire headphone just laid out. This is a much, much better solution. So right off the bat, Great job on that, Bose. I'm so happy you guys um, just reverted course on that. Right off the bat, headphones in the hand, very premium, very, very premium. I'm, I'm just gonna put this off to the side for a quick second so I can look at what else is in the box. Uh, the inside here, very soft, fine material. Um, it, again, I feel like this might just get dirty because of how light the color is, but otherwise a really, um, it will, it, it's nice. I think that it won't cause any trouble for the headphones in there. And what is this? So, okay, this is just, this is some kind of just cushioning for the headphones when they're in there. And there's no like zips or anything. This is just this one pouch, uh, little slot here that has all your cables, which honestly feels a little bit of an afterthought, not very nicely done. Like you can see the stitching 
on here and everything. That, that, that is a little bit of a miss. I feel like they could have done this a little better. In fact, the uh, Bose 700 case has a little magnetic flap, in fact, that looks not exactly like this, but kind of like this, where you can just open it up, things are in there, and then you can close it right back up. So um, a little bit disappointing to see that the case, while a more compact form, is also a little bit less um, premium looking on the inside, which, which I, I mean, just come on, that, that's a really easy step to not go regress on. Um, you've got a USB-A to USB-C cable. Um, this seems to, just a very standard length, actually kind of a smallish cable. And then you've got a USB 3.5, no, a 2.5 to 3.5 jack, which I, I don't like headphones doing this. Just keep it the same because what happens is then now I have to, if I lose these and I want to use them wired, I have to go out and buy these and I can't just pick up any random aux cord that I have lying around to use them. I get it. Most people aren't going to be using it with ANC up. Uh, most people aren't going to be using ANC headphones with cables these days, but I just, it's one of those things like, why even include it at that point? You know, you could have just ditched it. Like, keep it standard if you want to keep it simple for people to use, or don't include it at all at this point. So that's the case. And the outside of the case, let me just go ahead and see. It does bend pretty easily. There is not as much sturdiness to it as uh, the case from Sony is. It just, you know, pressing two fingers in, you guys can see there's no bow here. But if I do the same thing with the Bose case, it just, it's kind of bending in a little bit too easily. Uh, nothing that's going to be a problem. You're not going to end up, you know, causing, this ain't, this won't cause any problems, but just goes to show how, you know, the materials on this are a little bit of a step down and not as sturdy as they can be, which is just unfortunate because the price of these headphones is $430. And for $430, you better hope that they've done a really, really good job with the rest of these headphones. So right off the bat, let's talk about the design. This is more classic uh, Bose than the 700s are. A very, very familiar design. If you've ever worn Bose headphones or if you've ever seen Bose headphones, these look right out of the family. In fact, it's probably really hard to even tell what the difference is. And one of the key differences here is that now the uh, headband adjustability does not come from the headband. It would, it was usually right here. You would pull it and the metal would have been exposed and that's where the headrest adjustment came in. Now it's built in on the side here and it looks way more premium. You can just see how it comes out. And this, this part and this part right here, this um, little, uh, what would you call it, a bracket, I guess. The, the holder here that plugs into the cup of the ear itself, that is fully aluminum. This is all aluminum. The top here is plastic. This is a cheapo plastic. I'm guessing this was done to keep the weight down um, and to make sure that, you know, it doesn't have problems when it flexes because this is bound to flex, right? You're gonna be flexing this a lot because whenever you wear it, take it off, you're just gonna be, you know, doing this every time and then it's gonna stay stretched out. So plastic on the top is not something I'm worried about. It does feel like it's a pretty good quality plastic. There's no crazy gaps or there's no cracking noise, at least as far as I can hear when I'm pulling it out. Other than that, let's look at the cup itself. So on this one, you've got a large button and a small button with the Bluetooth logo next to it. And then on this side, you've got the um, one hole, which again, I'm presuming is maybe a microphone, USB-C and that 2.5 millimeter jack for your wired cable. And this is pretty much it. There is no other buttons, anything. I believe this is a volume slider gesture. So that was what the box uh, said initially. Uh, so this seems to be that volume slider. Let's go ahead and turn this on and see if we get any lights anywhere out of this. All right, there we go. So that hole was not a microphone, that's a light. Uh, I powered it on and it just kind of flashed on me there. Let me see, let me hold it down again. All right, nothing. So this is probably out of juice. Uh, let me, oh, there we go. We got a blue light. Got a blue light, awesome. All right, and it's flashing now, so let me just grab my phone and pair this up. All right, so right there, Bose QC Ultra headphones. Let's go ahead, pair this up, and they are connected. So there we go, right after connecting, it does say that the uh, there is an app that goes with the uh, headphones itself. So let me go ahead and see if it takes me there, Bose Music. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that Bose Music app. It also shows me Spotify and Skull IQ for some reason. These are the Skull Candy ones, I don't know. Uh, installing this, gonna see um, what it's like, set it all up, and then I'll give you guys a little bit more of an insight on how I'm feeling once I've had a few minutes to spend with them. 
All right, that was a lie. I just wanted to show you guys the app real quick because as I was setting up, it looks pretty cool. So right when you enter, the app actually lets you um, connect these without having to create an account, which is really good. I'm very tired of having to do that. Once you skip that, you can go ahead and name your headphones and a lot of cool names. Uh, I'm just gonna choose Ultra headphones because I have no imagination whatsoever. So your product has been renamed, immersive audio. I'm just gonna skip that. Let me go ahead and just uh, give a quick look. So power your product on off. So this is a quick start guide. This is really nice. It will give you a uh, full rundown of what the features of the headphones are, especially with the button. So play pause is this button right here, which is what I thought. There is no uh, touch control for that. So this button is gonna handle that play pause, skip forward and back. So two for skip forward and backward, three for backwards. Change the volume is this right here. So this is actually a slider. Um, so sliding it will change the volume. I actually like this implementation a little bit more because there is a little bit of a tactile feel right here. So you know exactly where to swipe. My, Q, uh, my XM3s do have a volume slider too, but it's a little bit of a guessing game, especially if you have your headphones on in a weird tilted way. Sometimes you might think you're swiping up, but you end up swiping a little bit adjacent and it skips the song. This is a much better implementation of the, the volume control for sure. Um, let's go ahead and see how to answer calls. Answer calls is again, just this multifunction button. Uh, end is two buttons, so very similar stuff. Noise canceling modes, so quiet mode. Okay, immersion mode, great, and cycle through mode. So again, this one button is pretty much doing everything. Um, I, I wonder how you do it while you're listening to music. So press and hold. So all right, when you press and hold, it changes the immersion modes. Bluetooth connections, let's see what this is. Press the button to uh, connect. Okay, so you can just switch between devices by using this, and I believe this is also the power button. Uh, all right, a pretty decent setup, get started. All right, I'm gonna try these demos out, give this a little bit of a uh, shakedown and come back to you guys with what I'm feeling. All right guys, so I've spent a little bit of time with these headphones to get familiar with them and to figure out how I feel about them. So let me go ahead and talk you through some of the features that this has. Um, one of the newest features this has is called immersive audio, which is a equivalent feature to what Apple calls spatial audio for their AirPods and AirPods Max. These are, this is kind of like a head tracked audio where the audio moves along with you when uh, you're wearing your headphones. And you can either have it be still and come from, you know, multi directions, or you can have uh, the audio coming from wherever you turn your head. So that is a feature that was implemented by the AirPods a while ago. And it, it was a cool feature, especially for when you were watching movies or something that supported spatial audio, a great little touch, but for these, didn't really like them. They didn't work out as great as I thought. And quite frankly, I could tell no difference between still and motion. Even when I was moving my head around quite violently, it, it looked quite weird, I'm not gonna lie, but they there was just no differentiation between these two. So I just ended up turning it off and left it on normal stereo mode, which sounded way, way better in my opinion. Um, this does have the audio plays pause function that I said. So whenever you take off your headphones and put them back on, they automatically play and pause. In my experience though right now while I was using it, it definitely pauses perfectly, but play is a little bit janky. Sometimes it does play, sometimes it didn't. It was a little bit of a hit and miss with the play, but it definitely always paused whenever you were to take off the headphones. Um, next, let me talk about the battery life on these. And this is just a number. I haven't obviously gotten to use these yet, but this does support 24 hours of battery life. Um, and the number that I found intriguing was that it charges, uh, it gives you two and a half hours of playback with active noise cancellation and immersive mode on 15 minutes of charge, which at first glance is like, yeah, cool. 15 minutes of charge, you get two and a half hours. Um, until you compare it to the Sony XM5s, which are at three minutes of charging for three hours of playback. So you get, you know, you can charge it for a fifth of the time and get still more power out of them, which is surprising. That That is a crazy metric. And I think Bose really needs to improve that in future versions of their headphones. And let me move on and talk about my experience with the headphones and wearing them, specifically the comfort, the sound, and the overall ergonomics of it. So let me go ahead and talk about the comfort first. Subjectively, this is a subjective one. I didn't like the comfort of it, mainly because of these buds. The rest of the headphones feel great. The um, top band is lightweight and it, uh, the pressure, you know, it doesn't have very strong like clamping pressure that 
puts a lot of pressure on your head. So that felt comfortable in that sense. But what was uncomfortable was just the, for me, sat a little bit more like on the ear instead of over the ear, which is something I don't like. I, it makes me feel uncomfortable and it makes my uh, ears hurt after a couple of minutes of usage. So that is subjective. If you guys are, um, you know, if you're sensitive about that, I would recommend you to go try these out on a store and see how they feel for five, 10 minutes. And if you have no issue within the five, 10 minutes, you should be fine. I noticed this after five minutes of wearing them. So uh, you will know pretty quickly if they're comfortable or not for you. And let's move on to the most important part of any headphones and that is the sound. The sound on these are just excellent. No complaints whatsoever. The only critique I would have is maybe a little bit more bass. Again, I know that bass is a subjective thing for a lot of people too. People like heavy bass. I, I am one of those people who really like heavy bass and these are not that. These have excellent mids though. Like the, the clarity of them is just crystal clear and I can't, I don't think I've ever experienced clarity that clear. And you really don't realize it until you compare it to something else. And they're just so good. Again, I'm not an audiophile, guys. I know barely anything about audio. I know the basics and I'm just talking about how certain things felt. So for me, vocals out of these were just amazing. So if you listen to music with a lot of vocals, you will definitely enjoy the way that these sound. And let me move on and talk about the buttons and how you um, toggle through features and functions of these headphones. And that is kind of an annoying and kind of disappointing part about this entire headphone because right now there's only two buttons and one capacitive touchpad that lets you control the entire device and they feel a little bit too compacted into themselves. So this is purely volume control. You slide it up or slide it down and you get volume control. However, there is a small issue with these that I think was kind of a basic thing everybody does with touch pads is when you slide down and hold or slide up and hold, it will continue to increase or decrease the volume. These don't have that. You have to constantly keep swiping up or down to increase the volume. It doesn't go all the way up in one swipe and it doesn't go all the way down in one swipe. So you have to constantly just keep toggling at that if you wanna increase your volume or decrease it very quickly. That's just a very glaring omission there. Um, then you have two buttons. This one serves as, the, this Bluetooth button serves as the power button the, and the pairing button and the quick switch between different devices button. Um, well, this one is fine, I think that, again, whatever, but this button here controls two things. One, the uh, noise modes, the modes that you're listening to, which are the uh, quiet, aware, and immersion mode. And the other thing it controls is play, pause, forward, skip, answer calls, decline calls. So this one button does a lot, and I feel like this is too small of a button with no texture on it whatsoever to be as, you know, it has such a prominent role in the usage of this device. I would have really liked for Bose to include either another button that split up some of these functions or to have just a slightly bigger button with a better tactile feel than what this has. It really, honestly, I would have preferred touch pads over here for some of these features. And it still doesn't have one of the uh, highlighting Sony features is if you cover your uh, ear cup or one of the ear cups, it lets you listen to the outside world and the second you take it off, it's back. Or it doesn't even have a active mode where it can listen and if somebody's talking with you, it can you know turn off your ANC, let you communicate and then it'll turn it right back on when you talk. So Samsung Buds have them, uh, AirPods have them now. So this feature isn't like crazy. It's, it's, right, it's present on uh, headphones and earphones that cost less than this. So that is something that I can't really excuse. I feel like Bose has a little bit, their ANC is absolutely amazing, but their feature set along with the ANC is a little bit disappointing and could definitely be improved. I have to say though, you know, what it does have going up for it for it is being able to fold up like this and go into a case. That is still a feature I very highly regard and I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, build quality otherwise is great. That is where we land. And let's talk about price. These are $430. $430 is honestly, uh, in my opinion, a little bit too high for what these are. At $350, I would feel these are, these are a great price, but it doesn't feel like they deserve the price they're at right now because of kind of these glaring omissions and not even omissions. It has features, but it's still just not as great with those features. The, the features are a little bit of an afterthought is, is what it feels like, or they're just not cooked through all the way. They have a lot to be desired, especially when it comes to immersive audio 
and also the way that you um, interact with the device itself, especially that button. That is a pretty big letdown for me. Now, if you're coming from other Bose headphones, you're probably used to this stuff, so you won't notice a big difference. But if you have used other brands like the Sonys, the AirPods, there's just way more um, controls in there. And it, it just, it, the features it does have, it really nails well. So that's a little bit of a disappointment for me. And another thing that I do think that works the worst against it is the fact that you can get the Bose 700s for $160 less. And while this is great, the headphones sound amazing and everything is um, objectively, you know, great, like not bad with them. You just can't get over a $160 price difference for a active noise cancellation headphone because at the end of the day, the main thing they do is provide good sound and good uh, noise cancellation, which both the 700 and this do. And the 700, in my opinion, has a little bit more of a uh, modern design. This is a very classic Bose design. Um, I like this, I'm not gonna lie. I think that I was not as much of a fan of the 700s when they came out, but I've turned around on them. I do like them now, but between the two, the 700 is the one that looks like the more expensive pair of headphones, but these are still pretty good. I would say that if you can pick these up at a slight discount, if you get them anywhere near 350 bucks or anywhere under 400, that's a sweet spot for these that I would be okay with. But other than that, I think that at the price they say that, just check out the Bose Quiet Comforts or the uh, 700s at a cheaper price and you'll be pretty happy because the exclusive features on this aren't really worth that much. So that's where I land on this. Good headphones, but needs a little bit more of improvement or a price drop. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think of the Bose Quiet Comfort Ultra headphones. And if you have any of the newer Bose headphones, the Quiet Comforts or the 700s, let me know what your experience with them has been like and how you feel about these new pair of headphones. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you wanna check these out, they'll be linked down in the description below. I will catch you in the next one.